Okay, hi guys. So, um, Shulamit Lazarus here, and uh, I want to keep getting things out to you every day if at all possible. Um, it's an intention to keep teaching the tools to help you deal with everything that's going on. And uh, also, I always had this idea of teaching what I do um, because I had this client who, who once said to me, you're not going to be here one day. And I think that uh, you need to leave behind what you're doing so that other people can, can understand and, um, and have that. Um, so as strange as that sounds, I think in terms of the future and uh, legacy and, um, and being of service um, and wanting to leave something behind um, that will have lifted people up um, in, in the ways that I can. So, uh, so what I want to do is I want to start with teaching emotional freedom techniques, which many of you may have already heard about as tapping because um, that it was made popular in the mainstream that way. Um, however, it was founded by um, Dr. Roger Callahan, who was a cognitive psychologist, and then it was adapted by a brilliant engineer named Gary Craig, who gave it out to the public um, for free. And, uh, and it was then taken and, and then started being um, mainstreamed um, under the words tapping. But so it was emotional freedom techniques and then it got known as tapping. And so you may know tapping even better than emotional freedom techniques uh, since the, the word you know, has been popularized. So just realize they're both the same thing. And what I want to do is I want to teach you the basics of EFT. So I'm just going to say EFT or tapping, they're interchangeable. Um, I happen to be an EFT uh, specialist as well I, as I specialize in other things and I, and I clear trauma, I'm also clear ascension and, and intuitive and energetic healer. I have a nursing background, a psychotherapy background. I mean, my, I have a vast uh, range. Um, of, uh, of work that I do. However, I want to focus right now on EFT because I want to teach you something you can do for yourself. So let's understand how EFT works. Um, uh, emotional free freedom techniques is based on the discovery that all negative emotion, including physical pain and symptoms of physical illness, are due to a disturbance in the energy field. Um, so let's just have an understanding right away that that science is also confirming for those of you that don't know we have an energy field that actually everything has an energy field. To be more exact, everything is a field within a field within a field. But the way that we show the acknowledgement of the energy field, the electromagnetic field or what is called uh, the bio field in some, um, in some, the, in the way it's termed by some practitioners, um, is that we are able to measure, uh, the brain. We're able to measure the field of the, um, the heart, uh, with our EKGs, with the brain, with the EEGs, and we're able to measure the field of muscles with EMGs, electromyograms. And, um, but after that, medical, the medical system kind of forgets the energy field and goes to what we call actually as chemotherapy, which is using medication, bombarding one molecule into another, crushing, burning, and it's based on the 3D paradigm and the materialistic paradigm. So what we're talking about here is an energetic paradigm. And it's a, it's a shift out of the material into what is more and more being uh, confirmed by, by, uh, by science. Uh, science is always ahead of medicine because medicine 
uh, sadly, is um, being governed by, um, by greed. It's a money industry. And so uh, I'm not saying that people don't get help because I was a nurse. So I understand palliative care, but it's horrific at dealing with, uh, with chronic illness. And so EFT and, and energetic healing and, and homeopathy and all, there are many modalities that come in and actually help people uh, heal chronic illness because they're dealing with it from the causal level. And the causal level is the energy field, ultimately. So, um, you know, witness the fact that it, uh, 5G and all the stuff that's going on with uh, radio frequencies causing problems is actually disturbing the energetic frequencies of the cells. And when you disturb the energetic frequencies of the cells, then the body perceives that as uh, illness and it tries to normalize it, which is why things like Qigong and yoga and things like that, acupuncture, have been so helpful um, in, in cancer and so on. Okay. So there's an understanding that we have here that, that we have uh, an energy field. And there's also a knowing that if we um, have an energy field that's streaming easily without obstacles, without anything to stop it, that's wellness. That's a, a state of mind, of peace, uh, of joy, of connection to heart, of connection to spirit and the body is working well, the immune system is functioning well, all the organs are working seamlessly. Okay, so that is the ultimate of an energy field that's working well. Having said that, none of us has that anymore, uh, given uh, the things that we are being bombarded by. However, it makes it even more important to constantly try and get back to that state of homeostasis where the field is as even as possible. And, um, and so emotional freedom techniques allows us to start lifting the things that hold our field down and make us feel heavy. Um, and that is stress, just at a blanket level stress, which actually kills and it's seen as, um, as just a throwaway word. Oh, it's you're stressed. But if you really look into stress, it thickens the blood, it makes the heart function inappropriately and improperly, um, the mind doesn't work as well. And we don't want thick blood because thick blood then can clot, right? That would have been great when we were, you know, going to be hit by a lion in the forest. But we're always in this fight or flight experience. And especially with the virus, we're in a fight or flight experience. Some of us are in freeze. And those are three things. Actually, fight and flight is actually some kind of resolution, but it's a bad one. Uh, a poor one, but it's something. Um, especially when you're a child and you know, you, you're, you're trying to figure out what to do with, a, with a, a situation in your life. Fight or flight at least makes you feel like you had some kind of movement, but mostly we freeze and we don't know what to do. And I've seen a lot of freezing. Um, so freezing, fighting, flighting, stimulating the adrenals, always these stress hormones going out, thickening the blood, raising the blood pressure, screwing up the blood sugar, all these things are going on, right? And also cognitively, we're not as clear because we're, we're not as rational because we're being triggered internally. So let me just uh, take a moment here to talk about the mind. We have 60,000 plus thoughts a day. Out of those 60,000 plus thoughts, 5% of them are conscious. 95% are unconscious, subconscious thoughts. And out of those 95%, 80 to 90% are negative, especially being fed by what we're being fed now, but certainly what we've been fed through society. Uh, you can't, I'm not good enough. I won't make it. I should be better uh, on and on and on. All of these things that we are, we are told by our parents, that we are told by the society around us, our culture, our, our ethnicity, is just downloads. If you think about the energy field as a, as a CD that gets impressed upon, right, with data bits of impressions, right, they are 
downloaded on us. I call them downloads, right? Because using the metaphor of the computer and actually I think that we are organic, self-evolving, self-organizing computers. That's actually how I see us. Um, so we carry these downloads and these downloads can be positive and wonderful downloads, right? But typically they're not, okay? Typically they're, they're, they're things that are painful inside that we're carrying around layer after layer after layer. And, and the work that I do and the work that, that, um, that I'm gonna discuss over time with these videos will go more into uh, how to deal with trauma. But right now what I wanna do is deal with the stress that's going on. Okay, so what happens is that when you have a thought and that thought is associated with a negative feeling or a negative experience, it charges that thought negatively. That negatively charged thought creates blockages in the energy field. Those blockages in the energy field show up in the acupuncture meridians. And by tapping on certain acupuncture points to major acupuncture meridians, we're able to clear those blocks. When we clear those blocks, we're clearing the charge that is connected to the thought. And when you clear a charge that's connected to a thought, your whole field lightens up, you're able to think more clearly, and you feel better, okay? And so our function in this video is just to deal with the stress of everything that's going on with COVID, with the virus, with, with seeing you know, people in masks and your mind making up stories and, and all stuff like that. But we're gonna make it very, very basic. So um, I'm gonna teach a tapping process and I'm gonna make it extremely simple so that there's no way that you get confused and you could watch it again and again and, and do it. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we, when, we, when, we, uh, when we focus on the thing that's bothering us, we, we tune to it. When we attune to it, right, we bring it up. Now, you may find it difficult to hear certain wording because one of the things that we're going to do is, I'm not very linear, so just <laughs> try and follow me if you can. Uh, if you're a woman, I know you can. Um, anyway, um, and, and if you're a man who's in touch with your feminine side, I know you can too. But in any event, yeah, so I'm gonna do this, right? Because that's how I am. So, um, so, what, what's important to know is that we're gonna use certain verbiage and, and it's set up on purpose, okay? And I always have to tell my clients about this because it can be, it can seem counterintuitive. So if it, what we're gonna be saying is even though I have this blank, I deeply and completely accept myself. Now, if I was working with you one-on-one -on, -one on an issue and let's say you feel shame, about something and I say, even though I feel ashamed of myself about this, I deeply, completely accept myself, it's understandable that you're going to say, okay, that doesn't make any sense because I don't, I don't feel good about myself, right? I feel ashamed of myself or I feel angry at myself. But there is a part of you that is always, always, always in alignment, is always connected to spirit, always. And connection to spirit is divine love. It is non-conditional. It is constantly there for you. The problem is, is that we judge ourselves. We get caught up in, in the charge of these thoughts that galvanize us and don't let us see uh, accurately. And we get hijacked by the self that had the issue. Because when you have something happen in your life that catches you off guard, especially from birth to seven. Birth to seven is basically download and after that is playback. So when you have something that catches you off guard like that, immediately in any kind of fight or flight or freeze experience, you immediately at that moment birth three core beliefs. One about yourself, one about relationship, and one about life, okay? And at that point, and we'll talk about creating the future from the past 
uh, in the present and, and how time works and everything. But at that point, in essence, that self is throwing that emotionalized thought, which is what a belief is, an emotionalized thought, into the water of time like a skipping stone. So it goes, bah, 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 and it creates your future already at that moment. So by the time you get to that other point, by the time you get to what you experience, the current you experiencing, and you go, hey, uh, I don't want this. I, I, I don't know how this happened, but I'm not consciously wanting this. It was created back here. You're already experiencing the result of the core beliefs of this self that experienced it in the past, right? And so our job then becomes to clear the core beliefs of this self, right? And, and through matrix re-imprinting, which is another thing I can talk to you about and I will eventually, we actually neutralize that. So, but just to suffice it to say that the birth to seven is download and after that is pretty much playback, although teenage is another major download. And of course, if there's any you know, divorces and deaths and, and losses and so on. There's, there's more shocks to the system. So we're carrying this stuff, right? And, but all at the same time, there's a part of you that's always, always, always there for you. But if you're galvanized by certain experiences that don't let you see straight, basically that self is now driving the bus. That self has got your eyes. That self has your body, right? Which is why many times I'll say to a client, how old do you feel in that experience that you're having right now? And they'll go, oh, 7, 14, 21, 6, 3. Because that self is actually more present than my current client at the time. And so when that happens, you can't accept yourself, right? And so logically, you're saying, okay, this doesn't make any sense right? But in fact, that part of you is always accepting you, right? It's really about clearing all this stuff so that you can get back to self-love. And then you know that you're accepted and loved from the inside out and you always have been, which is a phenomenal feeling to have that. Um, so I'm going to have you saying, I deeply and completely accept myself. Uh, another thing that people have a hard time with is that they think that if I say something, but I don't want it, you know, I don't want that, I, yeah, right? That somehow it's going to make it go deeper. It's the other way around. It's already there. Your anger, your envy, your jealousy, you're not good enough, you're I'm not lovable enough, or I can't speak like that, or I wish I looked like that, or whatever it is, scarcity, whatever it is that, you, that, you, that you're dealing with, it's already there. The thing is to bring it up and out, you know? It's almost like a boil, right? Sorry for the graphic metaphor, but it's perfect because that's what the body does, right? It says, okay, I'm taking this poison up and out, right? Up and out, right? And so that's what we want, up and out. We want it to come up. And so by, by focusing on it and saying, even though I have this anger or even though I have this jealousy or even though I have this sadness or whatever it is, or even though I have this belief about money, you know, um, you know, uh, that, that, that makes me feel like I'm just never going to have it or whatever it is, right? Um, you want to focus on it because you're bringing it up. And then as we tap, we're clearing it out and that's what we want to do, right? So, and the way we do that, is uh, we want to test it, right? We want to test it beforehand and we want to test it afterwards. So we started with some, we start with something called the suds level, which is basically subjective units of distress. And it's zero to 10. So it's very simple, it's a scale, zero to 10. And so what you want to do when you're uh, starting to deal with something that you're tapping on is to look, where am I? in terms of my sub level. But I just say, where are you, zero, Z zero to 10 me, I sort of made it into, <laughs> I made it into a verb or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I did, I made it into a verb, I just realized. So anyway, um, so, so zero to 10 me, right? Okay, um, and so you may be um, an eight, 
on whatever it is you know that you're dealing with now we're going to just be dealing with stressor that's all we're going to do is just feeling stress just stress okay we want it really really basic um because i want to step by step teach you this process and i don't want to jump into any specifics until i first teach you the basics so um so you check you say oh it's a seven okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to do three rounds and then at the end of those three rounds you check in again and maybe you're a five right maybe you're a five right and you also can check into how your body feels so people especially the people that are very in touch with their body very kinesthetic they can feel maybe oppression on their chest or uh, butterflies in their stomach or something that tells them how stressed they really feel right when you check again notice those parameters right notice the feeling in your belly notice the feeling on your chest so you'll get a clear idea as to where you were and where you are now okay and you can see your progress first of all in the beginning when you're tapping that just feels good right because you feel like oh yeah i'm getting something done that feels good after a while you just take it for granted right it just becomes like breathing but in the beginning it's good to have a structure after a while the structure goes bye bye and it's really about flow right i certainly don't have a structure with my clients and being an intuitive i work 99.9 percent .9 out of pure flow um but i want to teach you the structure right just like sentences right abc and then you can make your words and then you can make word sentences and then paragraphs and just do phenomenal poetry after that and then you do free form and whatever and you just do an art right but right now we're going to do basics okay so um so i talked about those two things that's really important so i want you to know that we're lifting it up and out and um and that it's already there you're not digging it any deeper uh so it's not about affirmation this is not an affirmation uh, and i'll talk about affirmations another time so that's a whole nother subject because they don't work the way people think they do um but they do work but not the way they think they do anyway and so um okay so that's what we're going to do all right so these are the points they're going to be very very simple points if you ever look into the research and uh, not research if you ever look into eft the first emotional freedom techniques was very long and, um, and tapped on the head and moved the eyes and stuff like that. And that was basically the recipe that Gary got from Callahan. And then little by little, being the elegant engineer, he just dropped it, dropped it, dropped it until we were down to very basic, uh, simple, um, simple process. And I use this process with 99.999% um effectively with all my clients so i love the simplicity of it because as you get uh comfortable with the process um then you don't have to be stuck in the structure all right so this is considered the karate chop area and this is the setup area so we call this the setup area because you're basically you're setting things up for the remaining process right then you're going to tap the top of your head. I do it like a, a little um, claw. Then I'm going to take my glasses off for a minute because I can't see you, so I'm going to put them back on. Um, where the brow meets the nose, there's a little indentation you'll feel there. When you go to the side here, you're going to feel a bone. So we're going from the top of the head to this area. I usually use two fingers right or whatever feels comfortable to you then on the side of the eye there's a bone you want to press on that bone it's almost as if you're going into the eye not the temple not back here but you want to go closer to the eye then the next point is underneath the eye you'll feel a little indentation that bone is going to be your cheekbone soon right so it's right under the eye and then between the nose and the mouth between the mouth and the chin the collarbone area, which really is where the collarbone, the, um, the collarbone, the, the first rib and the breastplate meet, but because that seems kind of complicated, um, I just use all four fingers and that's fine. Okay. And then underneath the arm, 
where um, if women have a bra, it's, uh, it's right there where the bra is. Uh, also another way to look at it is where the seam is about four or five inches down. Okay, so, and that's it. That's it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm putting my glasses on, there you are. Um, uh, we're going to set up on the, um, the karate chop area. So you're, ta you're taking whatever hand, I mean, also you can move from side to side if your hand gets tired or whatever, so don't worry about that. It's not side related and it's not rigid because if it was rigid, I wouldn't want anything to do with it. So if you miss a spot, don't worry about it. You'll get back to it, right? The important thing is just to tap and then bring your stress down. Um, okay, so you're going to tap on the side of your hand, and I'm going to say seven to nine times, right? So it's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, right? Seven to nine. Uh, again, not rigid. Don't worry about it. Don't get rigid about it. It's not perfectionistic. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Um, okay, so, <laughs> all right. So what, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set it up, okay? So it's going to sound like this. Even though I have this stress, but as we, think about it as a blank, right? Even though I have this blank, I deeply and completely accept myself. And you're gonna say that three times. So it almost becomes like a mantra. Even though I have this blank, I deeply and completely accept myself. But we're not going to fill the blank in with just anything because I want to deal with stress because that's what's going on right now, okay? We're watching people sick. We're, we're hearing all sorts of media stuff. It's scary. People have to stay away from each other. You know, it's just really tough. Um, I hope someday you will listen to this and you will be people that are hearing this not in quarantine and not having problems and it's the same basic, it's always going to be the same formula, okay? So we pray for, for that day to happen soon. Um, okay, so, so even though I have this stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. I'm going to say that three times, and then we're going to tap. And what we're doing is when we're tapping, we're focusing on... A reminder phrase and basically the reminder phrase is to keep our consciousness focused in because when we focus in then we connect with the charge of it okay so we don't want our mind to wander we want to stay attuned okay so which is very different when working with trauma we do it completely differently and you never want to do that for yourself um, unless you're you know a professional EFT practitioner um, okay so um, we're gonna tap so even though I have this stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have this stress, I deeply and completely accept myself. And now we're going to tap this stress, right? There's your reminder straight, reminder phase, okay? This stress. And then you're going to go to the brow, this stress. Then you're going to go side of the eye, this stress. Now you can see how fast I'm tapping. You can tap a little slower if you want. This stress. Under the eye between the nose and the mouth, this stress. Between the mouth and the chin, this stress. Now we're gonna to go to the collarbone area. There I go with my four fingers, this stress. You can even do it with your five fingers. You can even do it like this if you want, whatever feels comfortable and whatever gets the work done, okay? This stress underneath the arm, this stress, okay? So let's just say um, my stress is at a seven, which it's not right now. I'm gonna say it's at a four, because that's really where it is right now, just checking in, right? Reading certain news things or whatever. So I'm actually gonna do it in front of you, and you do it along with me, okay? All right, so now we're gonna do another round. This stress. Go to the brow, 
this stress side of the eye and if you want to you can close your eyes you don't have to keep it open because I'm speaking it for you this stress and then underneath the eye this stress then under the nose this stress then under the under the mouth this stress now you'll notice we're always tapping on bone and that's because bone has something called piezoelectricity and it transmits electricity and so we're clearing things all right now we're going to go to the collarbone area this stress under the arm this stress now we're going to do another round top of the head this stress then go to the brow this stress side of the eye this stress underneath the eye this stress under the nose this stress now you might find me starting to yawn that's a classic sign of energy that's moving and stuck energy that's being released so yawning and sighing now tapping on on the chin this stress yawning and sighing are classic signs of moving stuck energy being released so if you find yourself yawning or you see me yawning you'll know that energy is moving but you don't have to yawn okay this stress and now we're going to do another round this stress top of the head brow this stress side of the eye this stress underneath the eye this stress not good to get my eye in my my hair in my eye that's more stressful <laughs> this stress under the nose this stress chin this stress collarbone area this stress i can feel like a little yawn starting yeah okay maybe you too underneath the arm this stress okay so now what we're going to do is you're going to look at your level your size level right your zero to ten and i'm going to look at mine okay and so i'm going to say it's a three it probably would have dropped more but i'm also concerned about getting the information to you all right so there's another level that's kind of distracting me but just letting you know that it actually did drop from a four to a three okay so now what you want to do is you want to look at your and that could also be adding stress <laughs> now i can see you okay so what you want to do now is you want to um look at your suds level right and if it's coming down you just keep doing more rounds that's fine right ideally what you want to do is get it to zero okay if you're not able to don't 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 stress about not getting it to zero right just be happy that you're starting to move it down right and then as you do it every day you're going to be chipping away at it because your field is going to start moving right i explain it as um when i when i start with a client i say imagine that you come in with uh with a box of marbles four by four right and so you try and move the marbles and see if there's a sound and there's no sound whatsoever and so you you, you clear one issue whatever it is it doesn't really matter but you know if you know certainly if you have something on top you want to deal with the with the thing that's bothering you the most but if you can't if you if you don't know you just start clearing one right whatever's on the top layer i always work on that one right and then the next you keep clearing and clearing and clearing as you're doing that you're taking out more and more marbles then eventually what you find is that there's sound because there's there's movement right there's space right so don't give up keep keep it going right and i would suggest that you do it in the morning 
because when you're awake, your mind never, ever stops. So while you're sleeping, it's going a mile a minute, right? I don't, me, if you're like me, like you build things, you resolve things, you create things. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I wake up with a solution to something because my mind figured it out while I was sleeping. That means I'm working, right? So it's wondrous, it's wonderful, but also you're also cycling you know, the stuff from the day before and unresolved things, whatever. So what am I going to do for the day and blah, 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 blah. You are already waking up potentially stressed, right? So wake up in the morning, do your rounds, bring it down to zero if you can, have a magnificent day. You'll see that probably what's going to go on throughout the day is you're going to start having stressors, right? Because we live in a stressful environment, we live in a stressful world, we live in a stressful planet, right? And and the stuff just gets downloaded and triggered and there's no way of stopping that, right? What we can do is constantly lower it, okay? We can manage it, right? And so by evening, by nighttime, do more, right? Clear so that you go to sleep without the stress, right? So let me see if there's anything else I want to tell you. Okay, one thing that's important is that if you find your number has gone up, right, and certainly I've experienced this with clients, right, that they, they, they got to a five and then they went up to a seven. It doesn't mean it's not working for you. It means that there's something there that needs to be addressed, right? And, um, and so we'll, we'll try, search for that see what what is there that is bothering me that is like right over here that hasn't come into my consciousness yet but it's like right peeking in at me right and then tap on that okay so I taught you the basic tapping I taught you the numbers I taught you how to scale it I taught you how to monitor it um, I taught you about the body stuff um, if you find that there is a tapping point that is painful for you, uh, try and stay with it. See what happens if you continue to tap in that point because that means that's extremely stuck, right? Of course, if it's too painful, then keep going. Um, there are alternate ways of, of, of doing this, but I'll go into that in another time probably. And that's it. So I hope this is helpful for you. Please uh, share any comments that you want. Ask me any questions. Um, I love the dialogue. I love to, um, I'm about helping uh, you wherever you are and uplifting you and being of service. Um, that's my joy. That's my passion, right? So if there's any way that I can help, uh, please share any thoughts, right? Anything you would like for me to, uh, to make a video about, I can do as well right so feel free to ask feel free to um to share this if you found this valuable please share this with other people um i'm not very slick i'm not very techy i'm not very markety um i'm kind of a, a secret um, so <laughs> my client said i'm like a, a secret uh restaurant in new york that she doesn't want to let anybody know about anyway so um but i am getting out there because this is an important time to for light workers healers uh, and intuitives to get out there um, and help. So that's it. I send you love and um, I will try and get something out as soon as possible. All right. Let me know how you're doing with your tapping also. Okay. Bye.